Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the program. I'm Kirk Palchewski, coming to you from Arnold, Maryland, on the campus of Anne Arundel Community College, where today on our program, we will focus on the difference between the simple past tense and the past progressive tense, sometimes called the past continuous tense, right here on ESL Today. All right, we are back, and as I said in the intro, today we're covering the difference between the simple past tense and the past progressive slash continuous tense. The difference between these two is that in the simple past, the action has a beginning and an ending. It starts and then it finishes. In the past progressive tense, however, the action is continuous. All right, we don't know when it started and we don't know when it is going to end. The action just continues until it is interrupted by another action in the simple past form. But I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. First, I'm going to give you some examples of how to form the simple past tense using all the subject pronouns. And then examples on how to form structurally the past progressive or past continuous tense with all the subject pronouns, and then we'll get into how we can put the two together and use them to manipulate one another. All right, let's go to the classroom and look at some examples first. I walked to school yesterday. You drove to work yesterday morning. He smoked five cigarettes last night. She went to Las Vegas with her friends. It rained last night. We watched a movie on Sunday last weekend. They bought a house in Pasadena, Maryland. Okay, now let's go to the past progressive form. I was walking to school yesterday. You were driving to work yesterday morning. He was smoking cigarettes last night. She was going to Las Vegas with her friends. It was raining last Saturday. We were watching a movie on Sunday last weekend. They were buying a house in Pasadena, Maryland. Okay, first let's review those simple past forms, starting with pronoun, subject pronoun, I, all the way through subject pronoun, they. I walked to school yesterday. You drove to work yesterday morning. He smoked five cigarettes last night. She went to Las Vegas with her friends. It rained last Saturday. We watched a movie on Sunday last weekend. They bought a new house in Pasadena, Maryland. All right, now let's review the uh, past progressive, past continuous tense forms. Uh, with all the examples from subject pronoun I to subject pronoun they. I was walking to school yesterday. You were driving to work yesterday. He was smoking a cigarette last night. She was going to Las Vegas with her friends. It was raining last Saturday. We were watching a movie last weekend on Sunday morning. They were buying a house in Pasadena, Maryland. 
Okay, now we're going to demonstrate how we can combine the two tenses, the simple past tense and the past progressive, past continuous tense, and manipulate them. In other words, if you take the past progressive or past continuous, it illustrates an action that is happening in the past. It's continuous. It, uh, we don't have a beginning or an ending. But you can interrupt that action by using the simple past tense form. Let me give you an idea of what I'm talking about. I will take the first example that I gave you in the classroom. I was walking to school. Okay, we don't know when I started walking to school or, or when I'll finish walking to school, um, except perhaps when I arrive there. But we have to use another tense in order to complete this action at some point, so, or interrupt it. So let me give you an example. I would say something like, I was walking to school when I tripped and fell. We were watching television last weekend on Sunday morning when the electricity went off. And the last one, they were buying a house in Pasadena, Maryland, when a tornado came through town. And there you have it. That is how you use both tenses, the simple past tense and the past progressive tense, together. All right, you got it? Very good. Well, now it's time for our health minute, so let's go to our health authority, Dr. Discretion. Hello, Dr. Discretion with today's Health Minute. If you recall in our first session, we talked about the three main causes of illness and disease, those being malnutrition, dehydration, and stress. Well, we covered malnutrition in that first session, and today I would like to cover dehydration. We need 8 to 10 glasses of water a day, depending on our daily activities. I'm getting dehydrated talking to you right now because talking expels moisture from the body. Drinking water consistently promotes circulation, great for the body's internal organs and necessary for the kidneys. Stay away from soda, alcohol, coffee, milk. Decaf coffee once in a while is okay, or organic and almond milk is fine. If a true survivalist, trying to find his or her way out of the desert, for three days, with no water, finds a can of Coca-Cola that's nice and ice cold. A true survivalist will pour that soda right out into the sand. Why? Because a true survivalist knows that the ingredients of a soda pop can adversely affect the internal organs with things like phosphates and caffeine, etc. When you look at a can of soda pop and read the ingredients, you see many words. But under the ingredients, there really only needs to be one word, and that word is rubbish! If you are active and sweat a lot, you need to drink water and natural fruit juices, not beer or soda. Not rehydrating yourself with the proper fluids is a surefire way to end up with kidney stones. Now, as I said in our previous session, I wanted to give you an example of an illness or disease that was able to be treated and cured ultimately with a systematic change in diet and lifestyle. Now, oh, I see our time is up again. I'm sorry, I will have to pick up on that next time. But until then, this is Dr. Discretion. Thank you for joining me, and remember, live healthy and live long. All right, well, thank you, Doctor, for those wise words. Kirk Palchewski back with you on ESL Today. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Perhaps you learned something new, or maybe it was a review for you. But in any case... If you want to get into some more grammar in depth and detail, why not sign up for an ESL grammar class? If you happen to be in our area, Anne Arundel Community College offers grammar classes from beginning to advanced, as well as listening, speaking, reading, and writing classes. We have a great ESL program, and I'm sure you'll have a positive experience. But don't take my word for it. Let's listen to one of our students give her testimony right now. Hey, my name is Yixun Chen. I'm from China. I'm a student here in an Arundel Community College. And uh, I meet people uh, from all over the world. We study English together, and uh, this program makes me feel more confident to speak English. Actually, this is a good place to start your new life in America. And that's our show for today. 
For the entire ESL staff and crew and Dr. Discretion, this is Kirk Palchewski saying thank you for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you again next time right here on ESL Today.